Uh, my name is Anna Marutian, and I'm currently the center manager at Francis King School of English, Dublin. And uh, yeah, I've been here for about two years now. One of those years was a pandemic year, so I think that counts for four. And before that, I uh, used to be the DOS, the academic um, side of things, different side of things in Grafton College. So, Anna, I want to start by asking you uh, what, the, what challenges the pandemic has posed in your classroom, because I think we're going to talk about the teaching experience uh, yes. more. Um, well, to be honest with you, I've always been a teacher, like even with the academic work and admin work that I've always been involved in, well, I have been in the past seven years, um, I've always been in the classroom, like I've always had, I've, I've done my delta in the, in the process of the whole uh, situation, so it was a, a very hands-on experience for me in the classroom itself, and when the pandemic hit, basically on the 13th of March, um, we were all teaching, we were all involved in teaching, especially since um, the nature of the kind of uh, school we have is um, majority concentrated on the summer period. So our, our uh, students, our, our students are, uh, you know, young learners as well as children, as well as families. So it's a bit of a mix. And uh, as a matter of fact, just before uh, the 13th of March, the week before that, um, we had um, a large, large group of German teachers who were ironically um, with us for a, a course in IT, so technology in the classroom. And um, they were uh, basically just getting their CPD done, trying to uh, figure out how to apply um, technology in general in their teaching environment, which I thought was quite uh, funny considering that, you know, seeing that a week from then we were all thrown basically into exactly that. Um, and if I were to assess what happened during that week, during the course, which I was co-teaching with two of my colleagues, um, we realized that it wasn't as much the technology itself that was an unknown. Um, it was just not quite clear um, as to how to apply this technology in the actual teaching process. So say I, I knew how to share a Google Doc and I knew how to, um, I don't know, use Nearpod for an activity, but it was a difficulty uh, on its own, basically, trying to use that in a constructive way online. So if you look at the actual challenge when this happened and when the, the live classroom kind of ceased to exist and we went into this... Uh, virtual world. I had luckily had um, some training with Edmodo at that stage and um, I was able to kind of help our academic management team to put everything basically into the VLE virtual learning environment and include everyone um, and kind of uh, share the information with the teachers, with the students as to how to log on to it, you know, how to do the basics of creating, as you will, a classroom in its own right, uh, school in its own right. Um, the teachers themselves um, had obviously the issues that all teachers have and you know humans have with technology at first. So we had to adapt to all that. So the, the main challenge was to create a, an environment that would be uh, constructive, it would be helpful and it would actually allow our students to continue to be in touch with us because as you know yourself, teachers are the first point of contact uh, for, for, for the students. And this, we're talking about people who are out, away from home, you know, far away from home, people who are, you know, dealing with their own daily lives, work problems, and obviously pandemic didn't have help with that. So it was just the case of creating a safe environment for everyone to feel like, okay, we're in this together, sort of speak, and we are going to, you know, get through the whatever hurdles come our way and whatever does happen we have each other's support and which is exactly what happened support was the, the key thing in the whole process in my opinion so what what um was the feedback because i think we've, we've kind of covered the response to the the challenge the challenge yeah, and the response yeah. to the challenge. What um, was the feedback well, and how did it kind of 
influence the way that you developed uh, in response? Well, initial feedback from the students themselves was quite predictable. You know, it was in, in some ways predictable, in other ways not so predictable. Uh, well, there were the, the issues of not having a device, okay, that it, it went down to, to, to the basics of things. So some people had tablets and they, they had a phone perhaps, but others didn't, they just have their mobile phone. And that is not the best device to be, uh, to, to use for this type of thing because of the length of time that you need to spend in front of the screen, you know, having three hour, four hour even classes per day um, you know, it, it just wasn't practical. So a lot of students had to adapt to this uh, process and have to borrow devices or, you know, there were some who rented them. I know some teachers obviously were given devices by us um, in, the, in the beginning of the whole uh, situation just to assist people with, you know, getting set up. And uh, the, 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 the current kind of brought us to you know, microphones and how do I do this and video, some didn't have their cams working. So technical issues first. And then after that, the, the, the feedback was mostly on, well, negative at first, let's say it wasn't, it wasn't any change I find is always difficult. It doesn't matter if it is, you know, for the teacher or for the student, you know, it, it's, not a, it's not a clear cut, easy process and we were all dealing with you know mental and emotional um parts as well of the whole situation so the initial feedback was that uh, like students felt like you know they, they they were not getting what they had signed up for but then again nobody was and um it took a little bit of time for for them to adapt and to see the benefits of you know having this technology and having these uh, continuous support because even in a lockdown just seeing a face just seeing your teacher's face and seeing someone familiar and your classmates who you've spent you know months at a time with it it it, it all it all started showing its benefits and just having them you know be a bit more open-minded towards you know the process and giving it a try essentially was key i find because you know, it took time for them to be learner trained. So learners had to be trained to use all the things that we were using as teachers. Some learners were proficient enough to help the teachers themselves. And then um, it, it was really a give and take. It really was, it, 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 if anything, built the community in, in our case even further. Like it, it brought us even closer because we found each other as the only sometimes human point of contact, you know, when you are in a house with, yes, you have, you know, flatmates and whatnot, but you are, you don't spend as much time with them as you do at school, at work. So it was, it was, uh, I think, helpful at the end. And the feedback changed drastically within a very short period of time. You, we, we, we did, we almost run feedback sessions fortnightly, I would say, at least, at least that, uh, just to also on the, on the um, you know mental health level and just support to students outside of the whole you know how is the learning going but how are you feeling you know what are you doing and do you need any help or you know people would get a flu and think it was something else and they they did need you know classmates to say you know don't worry about it everything's going to be fine or you know pass on their 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 knowledge and say you know you should go there and you should do this I think that helped a lot and. In the process, the language acquisition as well, you know, uh, benefited from it as a result, you know, at the community kind of continued to exist outside the actual physical world, as we were saying, you know, not, not in, a, in a traditional style. And so apart from kind of all the technical fixes and that kind of thing that you had to uh, become an expert in, yep. what else would you say you've learned along the way, either organizationally or personally? Well, um, efficiency, time, time uh, benefits are, are quite extensive, really. Um, as, as it were, I mean, you know, the IT world in the past scared people more. And, you know, considering, you know, having a meeting online or even having an interview or recording online or even just recording your own voice didn't come across as something that people did, you know, naturally, or was that even an option? 
And when it did become an option, I mean, if you look at staff meetings, just keeping in contact and being able to, you know, call on each other's expertise quite swiftly without any need to do anything other than press a button or invite into a Zoom room or, or that sort of thing. So time efficiency wise, it, it actually helped a lot. Um, things like what we learned was students didn't use their L2, um, their L1 in, in the classroom on Zoom. I, I'm still trying to understand why that is the case because the group of people is exactly the same and yet we wouldn't have anyone using their own language. They'd be all focusing on English and communicated in English. Perhaps it's the nature of like all eyes in, on you sort of you know approach. Perhaps that's what does that. I, I, I'm not quite sure, but we found that it was beneficial for them because they they used you know L, L1 everywhere all the time you know in, in in the real world and here they were on Zoom and English seemed to be the only way to go so that was great. Um, organization wise, all sorts of paperwork really. I mean, uh, we we used to you know, fight for the photocopier. And then we realized that it could actually be done without using any paper. It really is perfectly okay. And there is no need for paper to be everywhere, which was a big issue. And I think with many schools, we all have this kind of, uh, have heard and have been hearing about, you know, paperless environments where, you know, there's no waste and, and, and all that. And that kind of happened and nobody, I don't think, is going back to the photocopier anytime soon. So there were definitely, you know, lots of uh, organizational you know, benefits as well. I mean, I, I don't see how this will not affect future of um, ELT. I mean, there, there is no way you, that people will have an induction in person when everything can be done, you know, online perfectly in the, in the comfort of your own home via video or audio or both or, or recordings or the, 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 the opportunities and possibilities are endless. So um, that side of things plus, um, yeah, the, the, the comfort of not having to, you know, move and, and, and commute and all that as well helped, I think, a lot. And people became more efficient. They had more time to do homework, for example, because they had um, the, the, op the possibility to kind of save time and, and do that side of things. Um, yeah, that's, that's what comes to mind. So kind of around the, the topic of the future, mm -hmm. uh, and you, you already mentioned there the things that you think will stay with us. What do you, looking forward, what do you think will, will come back? And do you have a do you see have a positive view of, 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 of it when you look forward into the future? I, I, I do. I don't think we have any option but to have a positive view. I think that's the only way forward. Um, it is the case of, I think, blending the, the both worlds because Ireland in itself and Irish culture and, you know, uh, that's never going to be substituted. I don't think that there will ever be a time when you know someone will rather see or watch a video of a place or a, a people or a culture rather than experience it live. You know, it, it it is a completely different experience altogether, and that has to be said. You know, we, I'm I'm not under any illusion that this is going to disappear and we're just going to be an online um, entity. No, definitely not. But I think definitely the blended. Uh, uh, Propose like it has to be blended because there are so many, um, you know, ob objectively speaking, um, benefits to being online as well as being in real life. So the future, in my opinion, will be experience the actual kind of live learning cultural um, shock effects and all the all, all the fun things that you know come with tasting a pint of Guinness or. Uh, you know, visiting the cliffs or whatever it is, that is always going to be the bigger part of our um, our community and what we have to offer to the English language learner and, you know, any learner at that point. Um, but there are definitely incredible advantages to, to having something like this set up where, you know, a, a Zoom class can, can help you prepare for what you're going to experience. 
once you do arrive in Ireland, it can help you keep in touch or choose to continue to be part of the classroom in a different way. Um, if you, once you've, you're back in your country, once you have made friends and perhaps that will lead to more development. I, I, I just don't think that, I don't think we realize what the possibilities are until like we get to that point and we do get creative with it. And we will most certainly come up with the most beautiful ways of integrating the two worlds really in such a way that, you know, it's seamless and it's helpful um, and the experience will be enhanced, I, I, I believe, you know, because we are, we are becoming a very, you know, techie generation, well, ours and the, the ones that come after us. So they, we, we have the phone and the computer and the tablet and the, the watch and the whole thing constantly connected to the world. So I don't see why that can't be used to, you know, enhance learning and experience and experience of countries such as Ireland and what it has to offer and, and things are, you know, endless. There's so many.